Hi, Chris P. Williams here from Friday Studios. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the Displace filter within Affinity Photo. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to be using this image which I took recently in Venice of this door and the graffiti. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a Displace filter to add a bit of realistic graffiti to the graffiti that's already existing. Right, to start, I'm just going to duplicate my layer so we've got a reference to go back to. I'm just going to press Control and J or Command and J on a Mac to duplicate that background and I can turn off my reference background. And next step, now making sure my new background layer is selected, I'm going to click on the artistic text tool. That's at the third up from the bottom on the tool toolbar on the left. And clicking on it, dragging across, you have two options, frame text tool or artistic text tool. We want the artistic text tool. I'm going to select a suitable font, um, which I've already done here, and that's stencil standard which I think looks like a good graffiti font. Looks like a quick um, hit and run graffiti job. And I'm going to select a text size of 240 to start. OK, I'm just going to position my cursor now, roughly in the center of the door. It doesn't matter where you put it, because we can move it later on. And I'm going to type my text. So I'll just type my name here. And we'll reposition it. Give it a slight rotation. And I think that will do the job. So now before I continue, I'm going to make sure my text layer is still selected. And I'm going to go to now layer. And I'm going to go down to new live filter layer. And I'm going to select displace filter. Now the reason I'm using a new live filter layer, not a normal filter layer, is because with a normal filter layer, you're committed to that action, so you can only do it once. Whereas with the live filters, you can go back to them later on and adjust them if needed. So just click on Displace Filter, and we'll zoom in on this text. And what we have here in the Displace dialog is a slide bar, which dictates the amount of um, displacement. and a scale to fit checkbox. We I normally leave that checked. Um, there, it does have a purpose, but I won't go into that in too much detail in this in this video. Um, the load map from file. Um, with the load map from file, a lot of users like to create their own displacement maps and, and not use, um, for instance, an existing background. And that's what the load map from file button is for. You can create an earlier earlier displacement map, and you can load it up simply by clicking on this button. But for today's demonstration, I'm going to be using load map from layers beneath. And what this option allows us to do is to create a displacement based on the background layer directly beneath where you insert the displace filter. In this case, it is our duplicated background here. So I'm just going to click on that. And then I'm going to slide this slider to about 27, maybe 30. Yeah, I think I think I'll type 30. And that will give us a good 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 enough selection. And we're going to commit to that by pressing the cross tool. Okay, it doesn't look all that great at the moment, I'm sure. But I'm going to now click on the text layer and we're going to change the layer blend mode. And that's done by clicking on this drop-down menu on the layers palette. So I'm going to select screen. And we can see there it's um whitened our our text. And it's still looking a, a, a little bit, well, it's looking very unrealistic. Uh, because if you notice the text already on the door, there's a slight blur to the text because it's slightly out of focus. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to return to our Layers tablet, ensuring that our text layer is still selected. I'm going to go to Layer, New Life Filter Layer, and add another Life Filter, and this time it's going to be Gaussian Blur. And I'm just going to slide this slider up slowly to the right until the text blends in with the existing text on the door. And I think about there should do the job. And once you're happy, again, just click the cross to commit. So if I scroll out, you can see there it's done a pretty good job of blending that text in. Um, you can even see here that the um, text that was previously there is, is, is shining through and it's slightly faded. And you can see in the crevices that the um, displacement photo has done its job with regards to bending that text around the edge of the wood and cutting it off in the particularly dark areas. Now, you can extenuate that effect simply by clicking on your background layer, 
pressing Ctrl and J, drag that layer to the top. Now we're going to go to the Blend Ranges tool. And the Blend Ranges tool, it's a very useful feature. It's very similar to Luminosity Masks in Photoshop. Um, so what we do is we just click on this cog to the top right corner of the Layers palette. And this brings up our Blend options. And what I'm interested in is the shadows around the text. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on this node on the right of Source Layer Ranges. Source layer ranges means we're affecting the actual source layer we're working on. If you want to affect the layers beneath this particular layer, then you use the underlying composition ranges, but we're not going to use that in today's exercise. And then I'm going to just drag this slowly to the left, and you can see our text is returning. Now, the reason our text is returning, I'll just show you quickly. I'll turn off my background layer, and I'll turn off our text layer, and you can see the effect that this blend option is having on our image. That's our starting point. I'm going to desaturate the color and then I'm going to slide it towards the left until I can see most of my colors disappearing and I'm only left with the darkest shadows. Now that's a little bit too faded for me so I'm just going to boost up the contrast slightly and boost up the saturation of those blacks and I think we're about there. Now, just a quick tip. If you're using the Blend Options tool, you don't want to end up with square edges like this, because if you do and you zoom in, you can see that the effect is quite um, dramatic and very unrealistic. Whereas if you slide these nodes out slightly, you have a softer, more graduated effect. And I think that's looking pretty good. So I'll, I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to commit by clicking on the cross. I'm going to turn back on my background layer and turn on my text layer. And if I zoom in again, you can see here by switching this layer on and off the effect we've had. You can see the text on top now appears to be on top. It's as if my text had been there a lot longer and somebody came along and wrote this EIS. Um, and if, if you wanted to increase that effect, then simply duplicate the background layer. But I think that's looking quite good quite real. We've got one layer where it says we lie, which is slightly beneath mine. Mine looks like it's overpainted slightly. And this one looks like it's been painted on top of mine. So I'm, I, I think that's quite a convincing effect. It looks like my name has been on that door for years. Um, and that is the, but I hope you found that useful and um, leave any comments below. And if you do want me to produce any more tutorial videos for Affinity Photo, again, leave a comment below and let me know what you want. Thanks for watching. Bye.